Hello creepy people and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we are going to be doing the unboxing of the September 2021 horror pack and I am very pleased to say that as I am filming this video we are officially 100% all caught up on my movie watching. I have been making it a point that every single night when I'm getting ready for bed I'm in bed I'm all cozy I got my little nighttime snack I pop in a horror pack movie I watch it and of course I always take notes so I sit in bed every night with my little pen and my book and I'm watching the movie and I'm taking notes as it's going on so I'm very pleased to say that we are officially all caught up with every single movie and we can finally get back on track with the September unboxing and you know we'll hopefully stay on track for the rest of the year. That's the plan, that's the goal. So really quickly, for those of you who do not know what Horror Pack is, Horror Pack is a horror movie subscription service where every month you get four new DVD and or Blu-rays and they are all horror movie genre related. You have no idea what you're gonna get. Sometimes they're really awesome movies and sometimes they're movies that make you question existence. But all in all, it is a good time. It is a lot of fun. I absolutely love Horror Pack. I have actually discovered quite a few of my new favorite movies through Horror Pack. For example, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Baskin, American Mary. Those are just some examples. There's actually one in here that I really like that has kind of become like a, a staple in my movie collection now so it's just it's really good it's a great way for you to expand your horror movie collection it's a great way for you to discover new horror movies that you may have never heard of before so if you guys are watching this video and you are interested in trying out horror pack for yourself I will have a link right at the top of the description box don't worry it's not an affiliate link I am not making any money off of your clicks it is a link for you guys to easily click and access the site check it out and see if horror pack is something for you without further ado let's go ahead and get started. I'm super excited that we're caught up. Like I can't tell you I have been just driving myself crazy because I hate being behind on things. The fact that we're now officially all caught up I'm just like ha! so before we get to unboxing the new movies for the September pack we have a pretty substantial pile of movies that I just finished watching that I want to review for you guys. So we're gonna do the review portion and then we are going to do the new movie unboxings. If you guys are not interested in hearing any of my reviews from previous packs, that's totally fine. You can go ahead and skip to this part in the video and we can just get to unboxing the new stuff. What is that? Get off my hat. <sighs> Okay, so the uh, the first couple movies that I want to run over are the Resident Evil movies. So I'm going to be honest with you guys right now and I'm going to say I did not actually sit down and watch these, but my boyfriend sat down and watched both of these. And when I asked him, what did you think about them? What do you want me to tell my audience? He said they were good. That's really all he could elaborate on. Um, he did watch them both through and through. He said that he has seen this one before, I think. I think I was like cleaning the house or doing something, walking around while he was watching these. So, you know, I would kind of peek in every once in a while and just see what was on the screen and see what was going on. And, you know, they looked entertaining for sure. But I think one thing I've learned about myself, and I mean, I've always kind of known this about myself, but I enjoy watching people play video games. I personally do not play any video games myself. It's just something I never really got into. I'm not a gamer. I don't, you know, I don't PS4 or 5 or Xbox or anything like that. But I do like to watch people play video games. I think it's very entertaining. It's almost like watching a movie. And I think when it comes to these Resident Evil movies, I think I prefer to watch people play the games of these movies than actually watch these movies, if that makes sense. So if someone is playing the video game, I'll sit down and watch that. I'll watch them play the video game. But these, not really my style. But my boyfriend, he said they were good. The next one I wanna run over is The Devil Inside. Uh, you guys know I have seen this movie before and I was really excited that I finally got to own it really excited about it So it like I said when I unboxed this one I said it had been quite a few years since I've seen it So watching it again was kind of my first time seeing it again and I will say it was really good I still really like this movie but what I had forgotten and what I hate about this movie the most is the ending I totally forgot how unfinished and how stupid the ending was 
until I watched it again. So that's really my only complaint about this movie. The exorcism scenes and all that stuff in this movie are really good. They're really kind of shivering. They're creepy. Especially like the, the chick in the basement, that part. That part like creeps me out, but I love it. Um, I just don't really like the ending. So that's really all I have to say about this. I do still like this movie though. The next one I wanna talk about. <sighs> this one makes me a little angry because Ah, okay, the next movie I want to talk about is this one right here, and this is the movie Come True. Remember, I had a hard time reading this, you know, Come True. Um, I need to talk about this one, okay? So, I gave this one three out of five stars. I would have given it more, but I'll get to that. So, I'm looking at my notes here. It's about a young girl named Sarah Dunn. Um, she's kind of like a troubled girl. I mean, I, th I think she's like still in high school. Uh, she's kind of like a runaway. She doesn't really live at home. She sleeps on a slide in a park. It's very weird. That's really, that's literally how the movie opens up is her waking up on a slide. She does suffer from like these nightmares, these night terrors. Um, they do show, you know, quite a bit of cinematic view into her nightmares and they do show like her actual night terrors and they were really really well filmed they were like the perfect representation of what a nightmare what a night tear is it just it was really creepy you know it just it was perfect i love the way that they filmed that it was very cinematic um they creeped me and my boyfriend out we loved those scenes of her having her nightmares they were really really cool um, so anyway, she's really having a hard time getting proper night sleep because she is, you know, she can't fucking sleep. She's having these nightmares and she doesn't know why. So she is at a coffee shop and she sees on the little bulletin board that there is a place that is doing a sleep study. So Sarah decides to join a sleep study, trying to figure out, you know, why, why she can't get a full night's sleep, you know, what's happening, why is this happening to her. And this sleep study institute actually has special badass technology where they can actually like, you know, they hook you up to all this stuff, they let you go night night, and then they study you the whole time while you're sleeping and they can actually see, they can physically see what you're dreaming. It is the coolest shit ever. I was like, is this a real thing? Because that's pretty fucking cool. So they have this technology that they can literally see what Sarah is dreaming and they see this like shadowy figure and they don't know why she keeps seeing it. It's, it's literally an every night occurrence that she keeps having these nightmares, but it's not just her. Everyone else in the sleep study is having these same exact nightmares with the same shadowy figure. It almost, it almost seems like the movie is gonna start going in a direction where this shadowy figure starts like manifesting itself into the real world. And that's literally the direction I thought the movie was gonna go in. And I thought that would have made sense for the title come true. Like her nightmares are becoming true, you know what I mean? But that is the furthest thing as, like, the, the, that is the furthest thing. This movie is very psychologically thrilling and exciting and entertaining, but it is also very, like, artsy-fartsy. You really have to have, like, a very creative, artsy mindset to watch and understand this film because by the end of this movie you guys I was scratching my head I was confused the only thing I could say was what literally I did not know like this movie was gonna take the turn that it did the entire vibe of the movie changes and not really for the better because I actually found it incredibly confusing so confusing the ending of the movie kind of honestly ruined the whole movie like i'm i'm pretty basic when it comes to horror movies like if the shadowy figure would have made its way into the real world and started like you know possessing people and killing people i would have been happier than shit that sounds like a good fucking movie right there but that is not boys and girls that is not the direction this movie took at all the ending ruined the whole fucking movie I just, I have so many unanswered questions. I want to know why, why, why did it take this turn? Why did it, why? This movie had so much potential. I don't want to give too much away. I really, really want you guys to watch this movie and I want to know your thoughts on this movie, okay? Have any of you seen this? I need to know what the F is going on here. At the end of the movie, it turns out that this like Sarah girl is in a coma? That's all I'm going to say about that. That's all I'm going to say about that. I gave the movie three out of five stars, loved the movie the whole time, and then that very end scene ruined it. The next movie I want to review is another three out of five stars, and this is the Horror Pack Limited Edition Scream Test. 
This one, <laughs> okay, so the thing with Horror Pack Limited Editions is you never know what you're gonna get. This one was a just, this one was a big chunk of cheese, ladies and gentlemen. This one was really, really cheesy. Basically, it is about a woman, this woman right here, her name is Angie. She is an actress in horror movies. She's kind of like a scream queen. And during the filming of one of her horror movies, she ends up losing her voice. So she can no longer talk, she can no longer scream, therefore she can't do her job. So by doctor's orders, it is recommended that she goes to this resort. She can kind of relax and heal and just kind of let her voice come back naturally. But while she is on this little vacation to kind of rest her voice up, people in the resort start dying in very suspicious, odd ways. They start dying in ways that people have died in Angie's past horror movies. So like say, for example, someone gets electrocuted in one of the movies that she acted in. Well, in real life, that's how someone in the resort died. So it all starts to become very weird. People are like getting a little suspicious. They're like, why are people dying in the same way that they died in your movies? Like what's going on here? I think my favorite part and the best line out of this whole entire movie was at the very beginning and it was the movie opens up with like them acting in a movie like Angie's on set it's it's like this black and white movie set and the I literally busted out laughing because I have never heard anything more true in my life the best line in this movie was in the beginning and the, the actor goes nothing's impossible William Shatner had a career <laughs> And I just like, I just like fucking died at that statement because that, how accurate is that shit? Like William Shatner, the storyline for this movie was able to stay on track. They didn't like go off into any weird plots or storylines. Like it, it pretty much stayed on track the whole time. The acting wasn't that great. The the killings and the murders in this movie were just kind of blah. The best actor out of this whole movie was a guy named Mick. He was a really good actor in this and for the longest time I thought it was him who was committing these murders. This, this movie I would describe it as like a murder mystery, love story, drama, kind of all in one. There's just a lot of you know, things going on all at once. The end of the movie was pretty cool. It had a pretty crazy twist at the end. I was hoping, you know, because the movie is called Scream Test, I was hoping there would be a good scream at the end of it, and sure enough, there was. So I was really excited about that. The ending kind of made the movie pretty, pretty cool. Um, it's not great. It's not my favorite movie, but I mean, it was, it was all right. I gave it three out of five stars. The next Horror Pack Limited Edition I want to talk about, and I know you guys are looking forward to this one, and that is Don't Fuck in the Woods. <laughs> I was so excited to watch this, and I gave this movie, ready? I think this is like the highest rating I gave every other movie. I gave this one four out of five stars. Dead ass loved this fucking movie. First of all, it opens with an Alfred Hitchcock quote, which I think is super cool. Like, fuck yeah. Anytime a movie opens up with an Alfred Hitchcock quote, you're you're doing it right. You're doing it right. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up for me. And the quote was, there is no terror in the bang, only in the anticipation of it. So anyway, back to the movie. This movie has full-blown nudity and sex within the first five minutes of the movie. And if that isn't an awesome characteristic of a horror movie, then I don't know what is. I'm not gonna lie. I love a good horror movie with nudity and sex in it. I'm not even gonna lie about that. I think it, it's exciting. Opening credits and the music they used in this movie is fucking sick. It is so cool. It's like this heavy metal, creepy opening, like green forest. Like, Oh my god, it is so cool. I was like, as soon as I saw the first like eight minutes of this movie, I was instantly excited. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm definitely, I already know I'm gonna keep this movie. And there is one scene in this movie where they're in like a movie store and a couple of guys and a girl are talking about horror movies and they're talking about Scream Queens and the girl goes on this rant about Scream Queens and why they're so important and why they shouldn't be replaced with like, you know, bimbos, you know what I mean? And I loved her rant, like the whole time she was ranting, I was like, amen girl, like speak your truth, 
that was, I loved that part. And it did have your typical cast in it. You basically, they all went camping for a weekend, trying to meet up with two people who are already there camping. I'm assuming it was like friends of theirs or something. But when they get there, they can't find them. They can't find their campsite. They don't know what's going on, but they don't really worry too much about it because they're like, and eh, we'll find them eventually. Like we're here all weekend, it'll be fine. And this alien demon creature from like the Black Lagoon looking thing in the woods starts killing people. Now, it wasn't like a great looking demon or anything, like it wasn't awesome, but it worked, I guess. I mean, I feel like it could have been better, but it wasn't that bad. And this creature was just going balls to the wall, okay? He was ripping dicks off people, he was ripping their insides out, like this little demon alien creature from the Black Lagoon looking thing was... He was really, he was really going in. He was really going in with the killings, and that was great. Uh, like I said, lots of sex, and lesson learned, don't fuck in the woods, okay? Just don't do it, or you're gonna get your dick ripped off by an alien Black Lagoon creature thing. The ending of the movie, I mean, the ending was a little bit slow. Uh, I feel like they dragged a couple of the scenes out a little too long, and it just really wasn't needed, but the very, very end of the movie was probably one of my favorite parts, and the... The people who made the movie, because this is a horror pack limited edition, okay, this isn't like a mainstream movie. The people that made the movie, they decided to add in all the bloopers from making this movie at the very end. And I just, I absolutely loved it. It was really fun to see the bloopers. It was really fun to see like how the movie was made. I just, I really thoroughly enjoyed this movie and I gave it four out of five stars. A lot of people said that this movie was stupid. You're stupid movies left to review and I promise we'll move on to the new one. So the next one I want to talk about is Cloverfield. This one I gave two out of five stars. Um, basically this is your typical found footage film where very shaky camera, kind of pointless dialogue, the ending just kind of cuts out, you know what I mean? So it's like that. Basically a group of friends are having a get-together going away party and all of a sudden like just after midnight there was a huge explosion no one knew what it was you know they thought it was maybe an earthquake or something had hit the building they had no idea what was going on they go outside and they basically discover that the entire city of Manhattan is under attack uh, by what I don't really know to me personally it looked like a big giant alien and then those little things kind of looked like gobbling grasshopper crabs. That's just what they look like to me. Um, I did find out that if you do get bit by one of those gobbling grasshopper crab things, um, you get very sick and then you explode. Um, so one of their friends dies that way. Uh, she gets bit and then she explodes later, uh, which is a good time. Uh, I don't know. The movie was just kind of boring. I honestly didn't really like it all that much. So I did give it two out of five stars. Okay, and the very last movie I want to talk about, this one was one of the last ones that I watched because I was just putting it off like crazy, and that is Anna and the Apocalypse. A lot of you guys told me in the comments to give this one a chance. You know, watch it. You may like it. I'm not really a huge fan of musicals. There are a couple musicals that I like. The two that I can think of off the top of my head is Moulin Rouge with Nicole Kidman and Ewan McGregor and Across the Universe with Evan Rachel Wood. Those two musicals I can get down with. Every other musical, I can't. Like Rent, for example, fucking shoot me. But basically, this is like your horror comedy musical. I'm just going to be honest with you guys right now. I skipped through every single singing part there was. So this hour and a half movie very quickly became an hour long because I just, I could not sit through the songs. I just, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. It's just not my thing. I couldn't get into it. And I wish it didn't really take place during the holiday season. I mean, maybe this would have been cool to get in December. It's October that I'm filming this. I don't want to watch anything or have anything to do with Christmas right now. So that kind of like, meh, bum me out. Um, but other than that, this really was, it was kind of an okay zombie movie. It really wasn't that bad. The zombies looked really cool. They looked like zombies, which I can appreciate. Um, it really wasn't my kind of comedy, but there were a few parts that were, you know, really pretty funny. I think my favorite scene out of this whole movie is when these three and, I think it's these three, 
there might have been another person there, but I can't remember. Um, these three in the bowling alley when the zombies first make their appearance. That scene was probably my favorite. It was the funniest where they use the heads down the bowling alley and the head comes back up the receiving thing. I thought that was pretty funny. But basically it's like, you know, high school students trying to fight and survive a zombie apocalypse with Christmas themes and singing. Without the singing parts, the movie really wasn't that bad. So I gave this one three out of five stars. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up the September 2021 box. I'm so excited. So as you can see, as we are opening it up, it looks like four new Blu-rays, which I'm really excited about. And we're not gonna waste any time, all right? We're gonna like speed race through this because this video is incredibly long already. So I think I'm gonna start with the very bottom this time we're gonna go with the very bottom and the first movie i always get excited doing this part it's like it's so exciting so the first movie that we got for september 2021 is uh, ah okay so it looks like we got our very first tremors movie so the first movie we got is tremors a cold day in hell now i know they have made quite a few different tremors movies I'm going to be honest and I'm going to say I have never seen a single Tremors movie in my life. I don't really know much about these movies so I can't really say if it's like my thing or not but they kind of look like weird giant ticks. I don't know. Uh, when was this movie made? This movie was made in 2017 and it looks like we have Michael Gross and Jamie Kennedy in this movie. Um, you guys will have to let me know. Have you seen any of the Tremors movies? I'm sure a lot of you have. Have you ever seen this one? Am I going to like it? I don't really know if I'm going to like it or not. I've never seen any of them, but of course I will give it a chance. So on the back it says, Bert Gummer and his son Travis Welker find themselves up to their ears in graboids and ass blasters. What? when they head to Canada to investigate a series of deadly giant worm attacks. Arriving at a remote research facility in the Arctic tundra, Bert begins to suspect that the Graboids are secretly being weaponized. But before he can prove his theory, he is sidelined by a Graboid venom. With just 48 hours to live, the only hope is to create an antidote from fresh venom. But to do that, someone will have to figure out how to milk a Graboid. Milk a what? This one sounds weird. Okay, let's move on. The next movie I'm going to take is the one from the very middle. And the second movie we got for September 2021 is... Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh my goodness, you guys. So I know this movie is pretty popular among the horror community. Uh, I am going to be honest again. I do not believe, to my knowledge that I have ever seen this movie. I've heard of it, for sure. I don't think I've ever seen it. I've literally never seen this, ah, and it came with another coloring book. Do you guys remember from the Child's Play one? Now, yeah, this one right here. We got this Blu-ray a couple packs ago, and now we have another coloring book. Oh my God, how exciting. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to watch this movie because I know it's popular, um, and I've always wanted to see it. I've just never personally seen it. 1988, and this is a horror sci-fi film. Um, I'm really excited, I'm not gonna lie, I'm like really, really excited to see this movie. But for those of you who haven't seen this movie, like myself, let's go ahead and read what it says on the back. So on the back it says, finally the truth about clowns is out. Beneath their smirky, sinister grins and wildly patterned clothes are clever killers from out of this world. Of their toy store arsenal and malevolent intent proves to be a tasty combination. In this killer entertainment that will leave you fearing these big top creatures for good, a spaceship, looking like a circus tent, lands in a field near a small town, signaling the attack of deviant red-nosed balloon-twisting psychos from another world who plan to annihilate mankind by turning people into cotton candy. Do they really? Okay! Is this like, is this movie liked so much because it's actually good or is it liked so much because it's stupid? Okay guys, we are halfway done. We have two movies left. I'm gonna take the one off of the very top. We haven't gotten our horror pack limited edition yet, but I have a feeling it's coming. So the third movie we got is, ta And this one is called Wakewood. 
Okay, Wakewood, never heard of it. Looks pretty creepy. Kind of getting some like pet cemetery vibes. So on the back it says, after the sudden and violent death of their nine-year-old daughter, Alice, Patrick and Louise relocate to the remote town of Wakewood to start their lives anew. But they quickly discover that beneath its idyllic country facade, the town holds a dark and mystifying secret. A centuries-old pagan ritual that brings the dead back to life for three days. Desperate to say the goodbye they never had the chance to, Patrick and Louise agree to resurrect Alice. But their daughter is different now, and with time quickly running out, the couple will have to decide if their love for her truly transcends the boundaries of life and death. So, like, I totally knew it. I'm definitely getting, like, Pet cemetery vibes where, you know, something dies, you bury it in the Pet cemetery, it comes back but a little bit different. So I don't know. Okay, so I have a lot of hope for this movie. I've never heard of it. I've never seen it, but I think I have a feeling it's going to be okay. All right, guys, one movie left, and that can only mean one thing, the Horror Pack Limited Edition. So let's see what one it is. So the Horror Pack Limited Edition that we got for the month of September is The Last Laugh. <laughs> So this looks to be kind of like a killer play movie, like a theater moment. So this is 82 minutes, so just under an hour and a half. This was made in 2020, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know, you guys. It looks interesting. Let's see what it says. Miles is a stand-up comedian on the verge of breakout success. On the night of his biggest show, a masked killer prowls the dark corridors of the theater, leaving bodies along the way and forcing Miles to make a terrible choice. How far would you go to succeed? All right, uh, this definitely sounds like a horror pack movie if I've ever seen one. I'm almost getting like, uh, I know what you did last summer vibes where like the beauty queen is on stage and someone's up in the rafters. Was that I Know What You Did Last Summer? Or was that Scream? I can't remember. It's one of the two. Guess we'll find out. I will watch and report back to you guys next month in the month of October. Or wait. We're in October right now. So we're doing... So I will report back to you guys in November for the October Horror Pack unboxing. Which, don't disappoint me, Horror Pack. It's October. That's your time to shine when it comes to horror movies. Okay? Okay. Alrighty guys, so those were all of the movies that we got for the month of September. I think we got some pretty okay movies. I'm really excited to see these two in particular, but that's just me. Let me know, as always, down below, have you guys ever seen any of these movies? Have you guys ever heard of any of these movies? Were they good? Am I going to like any of them? Am I going to hate any of them? Please let me know all your thoughts and opinions down below. That is all that I have for the review portion and the new unboxing for the September movies. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, if you are interested in checking out Horror Pack, the link right at the top of the description box. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to continue to see horror pack unboxings on my channel, make sure you go down and give this video a huge thumbs up. Also, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to go down and hit that red subscribe button. I do upload every three to four days here. But as the rest of you, I love you guys oh so very much. Have a happy, awesome, spooky season. I love you and remember to stay creepy. And I will see you guys again very soon in a new video. I love you guys. Bye!